Xbox One X. Uh, it's going to be just motherboard only. They gave me partial uh, unit, so they have some new guys there that uh, didn't realize I didn't want these assembled, which is fine. It happens. Uh, anyway, it's no video. I've already looked at the HDMI port. It looks fine, so we're going to go straight to testing. And we'll go through our normal routine and add our new routine to it, even though it's not going to be a 100 percenter, unfortunately. So we want to test. <clears throat> and we'll start by doing our normal test, test the filters and stuff like that. Just make sure I get you on screen and make sure we're actually connected. And make sure we're focused. Okay. I'll we'll start with these little filters. Make sure everything is good there. Uh, actually, I want to be on continuity for this part. Okay, everything looks all right there. Just make sure we're getting through. Should be if everything's going through first. Okay, everything seems to be good there. I just want to make sure we don't have any shorts to ground on anything we shouldn't. Alright. That's alright, so now we're going to switch to ohms. And we're going to test our retimer. Okay, right away, as you can see, we have a really low ohms rating. Now, this is not, like I said, it's not a 100 percenter on the last video, but if it does have a low ohms rating, that's pretty much 100 percent that the retime is going to be bad. Now, we'll test over here by the USD IC. And yes, it's low ohms rating as well. Uh, let me get that in the screen where I, so you can see where I'm testing. So that's a low ohms rating as well. So pretty much a 100 percent that the retimer is dead when you get that rating. Now, it can still die. Let me get you back over here so we can have a face-to-face -face on this one. Now, it can still die and not give you that uh, low ohms rating. As we found out in the last video, it can be reading fine and still be dead. So, it's not 100% that this will give you an indication that the retimer is dead, but if you're getting this low ohm rating, it's 100%. I'm, I'm going to say it's likely 100% of the retimer. This is still a new procedure for me, but I want to say it's about 100% if you're getting that low rating that the retimer is dead. So, we're going to go in there and change the retimer. I will not be able to show you the final result on this one, so it's just going to be a soldering wick. Uh, out of solder or retimer, but also I did want to walk you through the my new testing procedure on that. And like I said, it's not a 100 percenter, but if you're getting that low rating, it's 100 percent. It's it's probably going to be uh, dead. So well, let's get back to it. All right, while I'm setting up my equipment, I will throw up our expected temperatures. Let this repair. Okay, switch it back. I will try to remember to give you commentary through this, as in of late I usually don't do that. It usually has a device to test with. 
three days. That's all right. Okay, so number one rule while you're pulling these, A, it's going to take a while. This is unleaded solder. Uh, it's high temperature solder. It's going to take a while. Don't worry about burning the board. What you're looking for when you're pulling a QFN, it, or at least especially on this type of board, the console boards, is you want every pin to be wetted before you even mess with it. My suggestion is don't even put your tweezers on it until it's wet. Okay? Let's get it off here. I'm going to start by warming up the area. You don't just want to go in there and concentrate heat right on the chip right away. Get that flux flowing around. Okay. Usually when the flux has kind of got made its way around the chip, that's a good time to start concentrating in. And you do eventually have to focus in because it's really difficult for this area of the board to accumulate enough heat to wet the solder. And there's a big old ground pad in the middle of this thing that you have to wet too. So, but usually when all the pins have wetted, and I'm just kind of watching these corner ones first. When all these pins have wetted, the uh, center pad will be wetted too. So, well, we're starting to get a little bit of wetting. Okay, how are we going on the top ones? They are not wetted yet. They're getting there. Good pull. Now, while we're still warm, add some more flux. I'm going to grab my 120 watt and we're going to add some leaded solder. This will make cleaning much easier. We're just going to flood the area with leaded solder. Like so. It's probably time for some fresh wick. I will be using tech spray. Well, I would have liked to have gotten that while it was still warm, but not the end of the world. What happens when you misplace tools? It costs you time. Okay, when wicking, we're just going to stick it off to the kind of the side here. We're going to wait till we see some boiling, and then we're just going to glide over. And actually, I think I may be too low temperatures. I was working on something else the other day. I want to raise my temperatures back up to 450. I pretty much use my highest temperature ratings on these boards. Alright, looks good. Fast forward to the clean off here. Grab my micro pencil.
that. Good enough. Now, my current technique, I don't really care about how much I put on the middle pad, but if you're having trouble soldering one of these, try reducing the amount on the middle pad. Uh, sorry, the ground pad, the big ground pad. Try reducing it, because if it, as long as you see silver there, the natural color of that uh, center pad is copper. So as long as you see silver there, it's got solder on it, and it's more than adequate. You don't need a lot of solder on there. I don't care anymore because my current method actually uh, doesn't cause a problem with solder being there. Yeah. Now we're going to do something very similar. Warm up the area. The flux flowing. And then we'll concentrate down. Focus it in. We want to wet the solder. It should not take near as long because this is leather solder now. We're looking for that center pad stuff to wet. There we go. Now you want to place this in a way that the solder grabs it. Otherwise, if you let go too soon, it will go flying off into another dimension. It's not very centered. Okay, remove the hot air. Now I'm going to place some pressure. Squeeze out all that metal solder. Remove the air. Hold it down while it dries. Okay, before I do any cleanup, I'm going to check my alignment. The copper shim does not help. Ow, it's very hot. Alignment looks good. Alignment looks good. Alignment looks good. Alright, so now we'll clean up. By cleanup, we'll get rid of all those solder blobs and smooth out everything on the pins. Touch up, basically. And that's clean. Good. Let's take another look. I'm sure there's no bridging or anything of that nature. Now, you see how the uh, solder is going up to the sides up to the alignment marks? The marks on the side of the chip are alignment marks. They're just so you can align the pads. That looks pretty and everything. And, you know, if you want to go for it, go for it. But it's not, the big thing to know is it's not necessary for the function of the chip. If you're using a method where you're not using, you know, much solder on the center pad, and you're not worried about it squeezing out the sides like it did for me. You don't have to touch it up. You can, if you're not experienced, you can actually get more trouble trying to touch up these chips than just leaving it be. It will make contact just fine. You know, don't worry about pretty. Pretty comes with experience. 
what you want is uh, to be effective when you're starting out on this. Worry about doing an effective repair. Worry about pretty later. There are lots of techs who just do it effective, you know, and they're very successful. It's okay. Okay, I'm going to give you one last look. There's no point in me showing you the cleanup and everything uh, in, to uh, in total. So, I'm going to take one last look. And you see those last two pins there? They don't look all pretty like those. You know what? It doesn't matter. They're connected. So, perfection could be the enemy of progress, especially when you're just doing something for looks. Everything else looks pretty. And should be good to go. You know what? I'll actually throw the meter on there and make sure we have our high ohms reading back. All right, yep, we're back to high rating. Very good. All right, and we'll go ahead and do it around the ESD IC as well. Should be the same, roughly. Very good. All right, so I have pretty good faith that this will be a successful repair. Okay, and that's how you solder a, a uh, retimer on an Xbox One X. Uh, it's pretty cool to do an updated one on my current uh, process, so cool. And go over some things about the older process too that works for, you know, especially if, if you're new at it. So anyway, if you have any questions about the equipment I use in this video, take a look in the description below. Uh, if you like this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like it, hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. Then you'll know when I post videos, which is about twice a week. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I will attempt to answer them if I can. And if I can't, then I'll try and direct you somewhere that can. And, you know, thank you for watching. I appreciate the channel support, and we'll see you next time.